So you probably already know that Firebase Cloud Messaging not only sends messages to Android devices, but it can also route notifications through APNS, Apple's push notification service, to talk to iOS devices. But I think it's worth explaining how it does this, partly because it's kind of interesting, but more importantly, because it can give you an understanding of what to look for if things go wrong. Let's explore further on this episode of Firecasts. So two things are needed for any service to communicate with APNS. First, you need a certificate, which basically allows you to communicate with the APNS servers in the first place. These days, I know you can also use something known as an APNS auth key, which is a little more convenient to work with if you're writing your own communication code. But I'm gonna focus on the certificate for now because this is what Firebase Cloud Messaging currently uses. Uh, second, you'll need to tell APNS what device you wanna send a notification to. And for that, you need a device token. It's essentially a way to uniquely identify this user's device using an identifier that only works with your app. So this device token is something that's typically requested from APNS by the device and then sent down to your server. Since Firebase Cloud Messaging is taking the role of the server here, it needs these two things, the certificate and the device token. So one of the first things you do when you set up Firebase Cloud Messaging is to upload your APNS certificate in the form of a P12 file to the Firebase console. And this allows the FCM server to talk to APNS. Then when your app starts up, your user's device will request a device token from APNS. It will then send that token down to Firebase Cloud Messaging and then Firebase Cloud Messaging will create and send back a copy of its own device token in exchange. So at this point, FCM has everything it needs to communicate to your device using APNS, and now you're ready to send off your request through Firebase Cloud Messaging. So just like with APNS, you need two things to send a notification request through FCM, a way to communicate with the service and a way to identify your target device. So first off, instead of a certificate, you're gonna use an API key, which you can think of as the secret password you need to talk to the FCM server on behalf of your app. And you can get this from the Firebase console. Next, assuming you wanna to talk to individual devices, you'll also need the FCM token, which you'll get from your client. These two pieces of information are then packaged up into a notification that you send off to Firebase Cloud Messaging. Now Firebase will look at whatever entry it has for the device with a matching FCM device token, and it will see that it's associated with an APNS token. So it says, ah, I probably need to route this message through APNS to talk to this device. So what Firebase will do is it will create a new APNS version of this notification using the certificate and the token that it has stored on its side. This new notification will then get sent to APNS, which will then notify our iOS device and your notification will finally show up. Hooray. So I know that's kind of a lot to process, right? But if there are two things I want you to take away from this explanation, it's this. First, most of this work is being done behind the scenes for you. Most of the time, you don't need to know or care about any of it. Second is that by the time we get to here, this is just a regular old APNS notification. As far as your app is concerned, this notification looks like any other notification it might have received from Apple. So let's stop and think about the work our device had to do during this process. We had to, one, ask APNS for a device token, two, send that APNS token off to FCM, and then three, receive back the FCM device token. Well, getting an APNS device token is accomplished by calling register for remote notifications the way you normally would. Uh, as for these other steps, you don't really need to do any work to make this happen. As long as your app has Firebase enabled, we do most of the work for you thanks to some fancy method swizzling. If you're new to the concept of method swizzling, it's basically a way developers can add on functionality to pre-existing methods in iOS by calling a custom version of that method, which usually then calls the original method when it's done. Now, often developers use these to customize methods that are part of the standard iOS library, but in our case, we're using them on top of any delegate methods you might have written. So in our swizzle did register for remote notifications call, we received the APNS token and send it off to Firebase Cloud Messaging in exchange for an FCM device token. Uh, by the way, I've actually been lying to you a little bit. This token is really known as an instance ID token, which in theory could be used to identify your device for services other than just Firebase Cloud Messaging. And that's why you'll see it created by the instance ID library in our code and why it's sometimes called your registration token in the docs. But for the purposes of understanding FCM, I think you're better off just calling this an FCM device token because this is basically what it is. I should also point out that we swizzle some of the methods for receiving notifications as well. And what we're primarily doing here is making sure that we're recording analytics information about these notifications. This is how we can give you some of those nice, hey, 30% of these notifications were open reports that you see in the notifications panel. And if you're uncomfortable with the idea of having somebody else swizzle your methods, you're more than welcome to turn this off. You'll just have to add in the code manually to do the work that we're doing. And we've got documentation for that. 
Finally, one last note with these swizzled methods is that we don't automatically call anything that would bring up that standard iOS dialog asking the user if it can show any user visible notifications. We know that this is something you probably don't want to call until you're pretty sure your users are actually going to say yes. So this method will still be up to you to call at the moment that makes the most sense for your app. Of course, now that I've told you that this is nothing more than a plain old APNS notification and you don't need to do anything special to use Firebase Cloud Messaging, you might notice this section in our documentation where we ask you to explicitly connect to Firebase Cloud Messaging. So what's that all about? Well, you see, in addition to being able to communicate to your device through APNS, you can also connect through Firebase Cloud Messaging to receive notifications directly through that service. But there are some restrictions here. First and foremost, this only works if your app is in the foreground. Second, this only works for data-only messages, nothing with an alert message, badge, sound, anything like that. It also doesn't work with content available messages. Those will always go through APNS. In fact, in APNS land, I don't think you're allowed to send a silent notification that doesn't include content available. So this type of message is only valid through Firebase Cloud Messaging as, as far as I can tell. So if you send this type of notification and your app isn't in the foreground and hasn't explicitly connected to FCM, it won't receive this message until you reconnect. So of course the question you might have is, why would you ever want to do this? So communicating directly through Firebase Cloud Messaging does have some advantages. For one thing, FCM tends to be more aggressive about getting these data messages to their target device. Uh, for another, there's just one fewer hop for your message to take, which is always nice. And also your device could actually send back upstream messages through FCM to let you know, for instance, that this message was received. But because they only work in the foreground, their use case is kind of limited to apps that are generally okay with not receiving these notifications in the background. One good example, YouTube. Their iOS app uses the FCM connection to deliver room chat for its YouTube live events. Since this app really only cares about getting this avalanche of chat messages when it's in the foreground, it's a pretty good use case for Firebase Cloud Messaging. But if you don't think your app is gonna need these types of messages, I might recommend not connecting to the FCM service directly, at least until you've gotten the rest of Firebase Cloud Messaging working. It's just one extra factor to deal with when you're trying to track down issues with your APNS implementation. So there you go, that's how FCM works on iOS devices in an overly simplified nutshell. Hopefully this gives you a little more insight into what's happening behind the scenes. And uh, if you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe, and we will see you soon on another episode of Firecasts. Thank you very much for watching. Want some more exciting Firebase content? Well, check out these videos here.